I woke up this morning. It's always a good sign. I, was I woke up this morning. I was feeling really horny. And then I realised, do you know what? I need to do a video on the Beats Pill 2024 version. The word went crazy. Discontinued in 2022. Mm. The Beats Pill. That was a hard pill to swallow. Damn. But no, 2024. The Beats Pill has arrived in a new form. Well, what is that new form? It's a new speaker. It's not the same as the old one. That would be silly. We've got a woofer and a tweeter. AK Mono, and it also happens to be the same setup with a Twitter as the JBL Flip 6 and the JBL Charge 5. When I saw the size of it, I thought, thank God it's the Beats pill, and not the Beats suppository. Ouch! Beats, who is Beats out? Well, if you didn't know, Beats is uh, a brand name of Apple. Yes, and that means, oh, Apple. Oh. Well, first of all, it's gonna have AAC. We know that off of that because that's their preferred codec. But it does have SBC as well, if you're on Android and you want to switch to it. So headlines, the headlines is mm, the price. It's always about the price, not getting price. The price is £149, $149. Every time we see pounds and dollars as the same, we know we are being ripped off. Rip off Britain, they're at it again. Uh, we'll get onto the others later, but just know this is about the same price as the JBL Charge 5. It's a lot more expensive than the Soundcore 300. It's about, the s it's a lot more expensive than the JBL Flip 6. Uh, size, it's a tiny bit bigger. It's a bit smaller than the Charge 5. And yeah, the profile is different, but not, the width is about the same as 300. But of course the profile is completely different. Just to quickly show you the speaker. As you can see, it's the old cylindrical uh, shape. And these days, what they like to put in these cylindrical shaped speakers is a, what they call a racetrack woofer. Yeah, very, very fast. And what's the advantages of a racetrack woofer? Well, it's, it's an oval shape and that gives you uh, more surface area in a, in a similar size. It's, it's a more efficient way of using uh, an, the, the area in which it's placed and of course, one with a one tweeter, that means stereo like the flip, that means mono, like the flip six and the charge five, but not like the 300 because that's got two woofers. And that means stereo. A lot of people will tell you, well, you can't hear the difference between uh, a mono. And this type of speakers and the way you listen, you won't hear much difference between stereo and mono, uh, but that completely ignores the fact that when you down mix, mono to stereo, you're changing the track, you're changing the mix, automatically they will sound different. And they say, I've seen a lot of people say, yeah, I've got a beautiful separation on my Charge 5, on my uh, Flip 6. And they confuse separation with soundstage. You can't get any soundstage on the mono speaker because that requires stereo. That's the whole point of stereo. It's a 3D image, albeit in a flat plane. And so you won't get any soundstage but when they say instrument, the separation, I hope, and I assume they mean, you can pick out the different instruments. It's not like a all muddy mix. And you can't hear, is that, is that a saxophone? Uh, is that uh, a piano? Is that a trombone? I don't know. Or indeed a bass guitar is more likely to be in the tracks you play, but be able to pick each element out in a multi-band setup or an orchestra if you want. We'd call that, I would call that, uh, uh, I would call that separation if you like, but it's not soundstage. You can't get soundstage on a mono speaker. Let's get that out of the way. That's what she said. The headlines of this speaker, I'm gonna quickly show it to you. Just know, um, it's kind of basic. You've just got the uh, USB-C on the back. The good news is that's a two-way. It's not a three-way, but it's a two-way, which is also good. It's more intimate. Uh, it's a two-way USB-C, which means charge in and use it as a power bank out. And also you can use this to play over, to play your tracks over USB-C uh, on another device because it it will support USB-C audio. Top is pretty sparse, volume down, volume up. Let's turn it on anyway. And it's, it's you've got to wait a few seconds for that to come on. It's not a quick one, quick one. it's not a quickie. You've got to hold that uh, power button down also, 
it's kind of multifunction because your power button is also, um, you know, if you want to put it into Bluetooth receiving mode, uh, uh, you'll light for your volume. So if it goes below 10% battery, that will go red. And you've got a multifunction button in the middle. And of course, as always, in the pursuit of making it look nice, in low light, you won't really see that. Yes, they are recessed, which is quite nice, but you won't immediately see that because the markings are very, very faint, but there's, you're gonna know where things are because it's very, very sparse. It looks quite nice. It looks quite premium, but it's audio. It's audio is about what it sounds like. We've got a lanyard, you should know that. So I want to quickly go over the headline features. They say, they say, the new Beats pill is seriously loud. Mm. It's one of those things you can say out loud and uh, it, it, it's meaningless, but people will perceive it as meaning, oh, because people don't like me jam. Oh, is it really loud? But really, it means anything to anybody because they're not telling you by what parameters they're measuring that. And we're gonna find out at the end when we do a test with all of these four speakers, we do our loudness test and we'll see where we are. They'll tell you over the original uh, Beats pill, we've got updated tweeter, delivers crisp eyes and rich meat. Uh, yeah, all well, your marking, just know. I think the original was uh, two woofers, and then we got one woofer, one tweeter. There's a big difference. Let's see a powerful room filling uh, sound across the audio spectrum. Well, I mean, again, ridiculous because what volume are they talking about? Isn't it? But anyway, they're, talk they're making you sound like it's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, as Sony do, and that's also completely ridiculous. But then they go on to talk about things like pushes 90% more air for bigger sound, bigger bespoke racetrack or woofer that packs more of a punch with deeper, fuller bass. Just know when they do all this and they have a little three at the end of it, it's because whenever they say what it's doing and how great it is, they're comparing it to the original Beats Pill Plus. Uh, yeah, so the it sits at a slight angle with the drivers at a slight angle, so it fires slightly upwards. Your, your, your landline, as though you didn't already know, is removable. Soft grip, silicon. It, I mean, it feels pretty premium. I'll give them that. Um, and it's got a nice protective silicon cover. But if you smash it on the front, you probably have a, a problem. Now, they also say, as they all love to do 24 hours playtime. They just target this. But how do they uh, test it? They actually are telling us how they test it. But here's the thing, how, what they say. They say, Testing conducted by Apple in April will be uh, software with iPhone 15 Pro units, pre release software. So, supposing the pre release software had very little bass, that's already meaning it's going to have more playtime than the production model. So, we really, it should be telling us the production model. And, you know, you have to go into the little footnotes to see how they did the testing. But they do handily tell us they did test it at 50%. So 50% volume. And also that's kind of misleading because you just think, well, that's that's in the middle of all the volume steps. Just know that a lot of these uh, speakers don't have linear volume steps. So if your 50% is slightly below other 50% volume steps, that also gives you um, uh, a bit more battery playtime. It's not going as loud. They tell you a 10 minute charge will give you two hours of playback at 50%, of course. Pre-release software, we don't know the tuning, so yeah, it can be misleading. Tell you about the, oh, they tell you the, so you can connect one other Beats pill uh, in stereo mode and party mode, only one other, in party mode, and they call it amplify mode. And you probably think it's gonna go twice as loud as most people do, because it won't go twice as loud. Uh, that would be 10 decibels louder. If you add the second one, you're gonna go three decibels louder. It's gonna be a bit louder. So when they talk about amplify the sound, do not expect it to go way, way louder. You'll just get more, immer well, it won't be more immersion because it won't be stereo. So it will go a bit louder in amplify mode, but it won't be like really uh, amplified. Uh, the other thing they claim they have, industry leading class one Bluetooth connectivity. What is class one? That would be 20 decibels milliwatts or greater. The, so that's what the, the Bluetooth on the Beats pill will do. 20 decibel milliwatts compared to, yeah, the Flip 6 will only do 10 decibels milliwatts, but the Charge 5 does do 20 decibel milliwatts. So it's the same as the Charge 5 and the Charge 5 is not just a new thing out. So don't think 
it's a huge step forward uh, in transmission power. And that brings us neatly onto uh, talking about the speaker. Well, we talk, sort of, anyway, that was a bit of a waffle, of course. Not everybody likes my waffle. So obviously we need to know what, what can we expect from frequency response? Just know, testing a frequency response on these type of speakers is very different to the real world where you've got limiters. So you're not really testing, you know, sudden transients and peaks when we do these frequency response. And that's when you'll get big differences in, in responses when these speakers have to handle peak power. By the way, when they talk about the power rating on these speakers, it is that the only time they really draw that power is to produce those big peaks. And that's when one speaker may, the two speakers that look to have the same bass in a frequency response could have very different uh, res responses in the bass in real world tracks, on bass heavy tracks. One would still be quite dynamic and it'd be able to handle most of that bass. Another one may not be able to handle dynamics at all and will limit, you know, distortion or whatever, for whatever reason or low power. It will, uh, the limiters will come in, you won't get that much bass. So this is a guide only for frequency response. Notice how the volume steps adjust as you go louder. So you've got more control at lower volumes. And when you're hitting your 70, 80, 100%, it won't go much louder per volume step. We've got a classic smiley face or V shape. I mean, that's big. That's a big old dip in the mids. If we have a look at where we think the center line should be, then you're looking at bass that's probably starting to roll off around 70 Hertz, which isn't too bad, but we've got big lift at the high end. It certainly looks like it will have a character of its own, but it does look like it will maintain bass somewhat at maximum volume. So very, talked about when measure at 50%, and you think, oh, well, all speakers, 50% is halfway on their volume steps. No, because a lot of these are not linear in their volume steps. This is not very linear at all. Loads of control over at lower moderate volumes, very little control at the higher volumes because each volume step, and it goes a little bit more louder compared to how much control you've got for each volume step as it gradually goes up in volume at lower uh, volumes. Do know, this speaker does not have a passive radiator. We're used to speakers mostly coming out now with passive radiators. One note, notable exception was the Sonus Rome. Look, it's not a game changer. It's reinforcing a very narrow area. I'm going a tiny bit deeper and giving you a bit more punch to fill in a little bit of that lost space. It's not the game changing thing that you hear a lot of people. And there's, you know, it's like ports. Should you have a port, not have a port, it changes the nature of, of the type of bass you're hearing. So just know it's not a game changer, but on these type of speakers, limited bass, we would like a passive radiator. There is no passive radiator. These have all got passive radiators. This has no passive radiator. It's got an app. It's really, really basic. There's no customization in terms of the sound available on the Beats Pill. You can, I will indeed now show you a quick look at the app. So in the app, not a huge amount of features there is no EQ there are no presets you can add one other speaker you can share your speaker of course rename just the volume you can customize the core controls tells you your firmware and explore just telling you about the speaker so really not a lot going on here so yeah, that was pretty basic. Given the pricing, they're pri for the size of speaker, this is, uh, pri well, I know, it's not Bose uh, sound like max territory, but 150-ish dollars, pounds for this type of speaker in a very competitive area, it features matter, you know, to differentiate a lot of these speakers, because a lot of them either sound similar or different, but in different ways, one more bass, one uh, more accurate in the mids, another one boosted highs, which a lot of people would just say sounds more detailed. But it's the only one here that doesn't have customization in the EQ with the mic of Apple. What's going on? Yeah, it's milk, you know, kind of lifestyle-ish speaker in it. I think they're milking the market, a lot of these uh, companies, especially when they can brand it under Apple. So let's have a listen, all these speakers, 40%. Wish that things were different, time 
to show you quickly how v-shaped the beats pill is if you overlay the original track the massive dip in the mids it does maintain bass pretty well at these moderate volumes and it does have a big old kick in the high end three kilohertz and up flip six which is also a bit v-shaped but actually has stronger mids than the beats pill that's how v-shaped the beats pill is in terms of the bass flip six jbl style relying on really a peak around 100 hertz with the beats pill going significantly deeper given the size of the speaker against the motion 300 well the motion 300 is a pretty balanced speaker at these volumes it's got reasonable mids and a balanced high end it does have a bit of a dip around seven kilohertz and it does have a push in the mid bass compared to the beats pill against the charge 5 quite a difference in size the charge 5 has a similar balance to the motion 300 a surprising dip in the upper bass it's going to help make it sound a little bit deeper in the bass and it's relying again on a little push there around 75 hertz just know in the real world no matter what it sounds like to the ear in terms of handling bass heavy tracks it's always about bass heavy tracks when they're trying trying to, to drive the bass as well as the mids and highs they'll all roll off around 80 hertz you won't get the bass that you get in a bass heavy track from about 80 hertz down the the beats pill well here we are we're talking about the sound and that's kind of the point of the video it's very, very V-shaped. Uh, yeah, very heavy V-shaped. It sounds all right once, if you recognize it's the V-shaped. So right off the bat, we have to say, if you don't like a V-shaped, and what does that mean now? I don't know what it means is a V-shape. How's that different from an S-shape and all that? Well, it just means you've got no mids. I mean, it's really lacking in mids. I mean, that's quite V-shaped, but this takes it to another level. The mids are not there. And especially if you listen to a lot of not bass heavy tracks, intimate tracks, vocal tracks, so much of that track will be missing. But a lot of people like V-shape because it can be quite exciting because you just get the highs, you just get the lows. And of course they're not driving the mids. It means 
they can get a bit more bass out of it or a bit more battery life. So for a lot of these, you know, and I've got to say these big companies that go for this sort of sound signature, a lot of it is makes their life a lot easier. And for the lot of sort of people buying these, I guess they, they figure they just want an exciting sound. And so you've got the highs, you've got the bass often, and you can get, especially loading with stuff. <laughs> bit shaky. You probably don't even know who shaky is. Shaken Stevens, the British Elvis. Well, they used to say uh, Cliff Richard was the British Elvis. But to me, uh, from my era, it wasn't Cliff Richard. Even for me, it was before my time. It was Shaken Stevens. If you want it, you got it, you get it me. Uh, I digress. And of course, I completely lost the track now because I said that. Uh, the track, track came on. Very, very good album. Um... No idea what I was just saying. We were talking about the speaker, our V-shape we were talking about. Uh, it, about it, it can be exciting. But if you've got, so depending on what you listen to and how well-trained your ears, we talk about well-trained. I never used to talk about well-trained. I'm only talking about it because it's a harm and put this out to the world about what our trained ears should be. If you've got, if you consider yourself a safe, self-acclaimed audiophile, like that sort of thing, blah, 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 you won't like a V-shape because you want, you want it to be a bit flatter than that. You want to get the details in the mids, if indeed you hear it. A lot of people will not really understand the difference between a V-shape and a flat shape, unless you hear them in an AB. I think hope, hopefully you got, I mean, the Charge 5 is quite balanced, so hopefully you got that maybe from the Charge 5. And this, I have to say, the Motion 300 is pretty balanced. You, when you hear the AB, you, you'll hear what you're missing, which is the detail in the mids, and it can sound really honky, depending on the tracks that you're playing. Uh, so uh, sometimes for me it works and sometimes it's different, depends on the track and how, you know, and just if there's still, would be, if it's still got some quality in the highs and high end and the low end. So, for me, so I would say for me, this kind of works. You get a meaty sound. It's, it's actually doing the, you know, like we said, it's not a game changer having a passive radiator, it changes the nature of the bass. There is deep bass there. I have to say, it's actually handing, I was surprised. I was thought this was going to be another overpriced thing to, you know, then I can start, I can put it in my uh, thumbnail. Uh, I can't even remember what the last one was, but with the Bose Max saying the world's most, the pound for pound, you know, uh, world's most overpriced. We know, know them as the JVL Extreme 4 and the Bose Soundlink Max, world's most overpriced speakers. This is not in that category, but it's going to have issues and we're going to get onto that. So I'm saying it sounds quite nice if you take into account it's a V shaped. You may think that's going to be horrible and you won't like the speaker. But you have to say, it dig, does dig deep. It does hold its own. In fact, it's going deep with uh, 60 hertz and down. Whether you can hear it or not, hopefully you've got good headphones or something, or however you're listening to it. And if you listen out for it, you know what we're talking about. When a lot of people don't know the difference between deep, upper bass and uh, mid bass. And all that. But if you know what you're listening for, it's doing it, actually. <laughs> it's out doing it. These. So obviously it's easier because they don't have to worry about the mids. There's no mids there. Uh, but I was surprised. You can have a decent listen, depending on you know, as, uh, what I've already said, and we don't want to go over it. The uh, Flip 6, also V-shaped, but not as V-shaped, but to me, it just sounds thin. So whereas this has a V-shaped, and by virtue of that, it's coming out with quite a meaty sound, which a lot of people are going to like. For me, this is just thin. I mean, a lot of people like the Flip. Every speaker, somebody likes it. I'm saying, for me, from my point of view, that's what this video is all about. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. I'm saying, uh, that's the time I'm right. No, I'm not even saying that. I'm just giving you my point of view and trying to give some ob objectivity. However, for me, I never pick up the Flip 6. It just, especially, you know, in today's era, just to me, it sounds nasty, thin, anemic. You know, it can do a job if it's the only speaker you got and you don't have um, others to compare it to. But, well, you know, I've got many speakers that will do a better job than that um, at the, almost the same size and stuff. So put that to the side, that sounds anemic. Probably the most balanced uh, here is the Motion 300. And a quick listen, you'll say, well, that's got better highs. It's not about better highs. Obviously, if you just want those boosted highs, you like it. This is more balanced. But again, issues, uh, surprising roll off in the, in the uh, deeper bass, where actually this does better, but it's stereo. You'll get a sense of imaging uh, that you won't get on this one. Um, but you, people will say, oh, well, I still get the the separation. Well, you, that's different from sound staging and imaging, by the way. So it's it's going to be taste, certainly at this volume. So 40% for me, more balanced, 
I'd, I'd probably pick this up. But I, I'm playing that, I haven't been unhappy. Uh, but I'd probably pick this up at these volumes just because of the kind of music I play, wanting wanting uh, the mids. But there's many times I can pick it up and it. Uh, I'm not really missing the mids. It can do a job, as is what I'm saying. And of course, Charge 5, similar balance to the 300. Obviously, it's bigger. Um, should have the advantages in the bass, and it didn't. It actually lacks a bit of upper bass, but JBL do like to do that. They like to scoop out upper bass and have like a one-note boosted deeper bass. We got that on the Charge 5, but overall, the balance is pretty nice, but it's mono, of course. So, mm, I'd happily, but it's a nice form factor. But that's why it's very hard. What's your best speaker? Of all, they're all different form factors. All that can do a job in some ways better than another one. So obviously, as I said, this for me, that can't do a job at all, given all the other options out there. That's the only one I'd, I'd put to the side and say, no, 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 no. No, 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 well, we could actually make a thumbnail, though. No, it wouldn't it? Oh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Oh, keep going out, keep going. You know what we're talking about. I think I've got... What have I written down? Yeah, the only one I wouldn't choose here is the Flip 6, because it sounds too thin. Personally, not enough. Yeah, I said, no, I, said, I said that actually sounds quite meaty. Some people would prefer this over all the others. But I'm saying all three of these are good options. It's biggest uh, takeaway. There's lots of other features. This is about the Beats Pill. I won't go into all the other features. That lacks features. This has got loads of features, not just the codex. We'll probably get onto the end. But I, I could happily listen to all three of these. I wasn't expecting that. I, I honestly, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll have a listen. Because I saw a lot of bad reviews on this and saying it's got no bass and all that, which is, I don't know. If there's different versions of this one, we're used to that with JBL. Because uh, I should point that out. You, you may say, oh, I love my Flip 6. Well, it's going to depend on what version you got. And there's so many versions. I think there's like six versions out there. JBL, different factories, I believe. I know they say a word. It's about the region. I think it just means it comes from a different factory. But, yeah, it, this is doing a job. So, as Nick, for me, you know, more realistic. Well, that may be a realistic listening volume to you. I mean, you can certainly listen. But I can't get enough dynamics of those sort of volumes. 65% around there where I would do my listening. I scream, nobody hears, but I see the light from far away, it's down the line. Maybe I should not give up without a fight, because there will be a time.
against the flip six. Beats Peel obviously has the weaker mids. It's very weak in the mids. It's very V-shaped. Has the bigger boost to the high end. But it does beat out the flip six for base, and it leaves the flip six sounding quite anemic. The Beats Peel actually outbases the Motion 300 here, but the overall balance, again, is going to be V-shaped with quite a boosted high end. Charge 5, similar balance to the Motion 300, but does manage to retain a bit more base. But the Beats Pill does have a big upper base kick while the Charge 5 goes deeper. So that base is actually going to sound quite different on each speaker. Although into the deeper base, there is more on the Beats Pill. You ain't going to hear that. That's well rolled off. We're starting to push the volumes. Remember, non-linear volume steps. So you won't get much more volume after 65% for each extra press of the volume on the Beats Pill. The, again, obviously, I wouldn't listen to the Flip 6. Still had those issues. It's even worse now with the bass roll-off. We've got issues now, I have to say. I'm doing this in default mode for all of them. I'm doing this with bass up because I wouldn't listen to it with bass up off because that because it's too bass light. But I know a lot of you do listen that way. And for me, you'd have to... Why, why did you have to do that out? Well, because you get distortion. This does have distortion issues as you push the speaker into those louder volumes with, uh, is it, I'm saying X-Bass, but what they call bass up or extra bass. I can't remember. There's so many different things they call their bass buttons. But JBL haven't got into the bass button it, uh, era yet. I wonder if that's going to be their, their next thing. Got EQ in the app, but no bass button. In terms of the bass boost button, distortion. I don't know if you heard. I certainly hear in, in that particular track. Uh starting to do, do that overdrive thing, which some people it won't hear it and it will sound fine. To me, it, uh, it's a bit nasty. I don't like it. But you certainly get distortion issues that will go away if you turn the bass off, but then you've lost your bass, but you've got... So it can it can do a job. A lot of people won't have any problem with that at louder volumes, and other people will say, it's well, I can't listen to it, but then they take bass off. It can do a job. You've got to just know it's quirks on a lot of these speakers. The Beats Pill still holding on to the bass. We saw that in the frequency response and in the real world, it's holding on to its bass. Of course, it's a lot easier because it's not driving any mids. But still, uh, you know, we are getting some bass. I was surprised because I was hearing a lot of people say it's bass light. It's not, but I wonder if they're listening out for punchy bass. So punchy bass really is around that upper bass. And it's not doing the upper bass, overboosted upper bass, because it is giving us some deeper bass. So for ears like mine, who likes a warm sound signature, it's doing a fine job. I can only imagine the people who are, that are saying lacks bass is because they only hear upper bass. The winner, though, for me, as I said, I could pick any of them at lower volumes. But, you know, I do like a satisfying warmer bass. It's not all good news. As I said, it's a sculpted bass. But you do get that sense of the deeper bass. You do get the sense of the warmer sound. And it's balanced all over. Some people would say, well, I want to crank the highs up. And I don't like it. It sounds dull and muddy. And that's the problem when you say, what's the best speaker? Because we're all different. Different listening scenarios, different tastes, different ears, different rooms. It's a minefield. I don't get into it all the time. Like, what's your best? What's your favorite? What's, well, the favorite, I would tell you, but the best speaker at what parameter? What price? What price? I do not get into that. I don't do the, the, the bullshit thing like you get with the online magazines. Eight out of 10, seven out of 10, like you could compare speakers like that and just say seven is worse than eight and it's better than six. Absolutely ridiculous. That's because they're there to make money. Run a mile uh, when, when we get those sort of ratings. Actually reminds me of a certain list on uh, Reddit. I'm calling bullshit. So that's where we are. I, at, these, at that volume anyway, I prefer the Charge 5. Doesn't make it a perfect speaker. And it's mono again, remember, and that's stereo. But they've all got issues. So I hope you've heard, you know, a lot of people would just do skip through and spend five minutes. They're not going to really hear what they need to hear, the differences between the speaker. They just want to know, is it better or not? And uh, good luck, as I said. A lot of those people, of course, don't have many speakers, and any speaker will sound good to them, and that's great. I had that, uh, someone else was saying it recently. I've said it many, many times. If if you've only got one speaker, you're brilliant. You're doing well. It's uh, It will always sound good. You, but you'll always be chasing something a little bit better, and each increment up will cost you way, 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 it's logarithmic, will cost you way, way more, honestly. If you can't hear a difference between the speakers or you, you can hear to listen to a dis distortion fest and think it's fantastic, I'm think, I, I th you're very lucky. You're doing well. I, I'm not saying, oh, you don't know what you're talking about or you're listening to. You are saving a lot of money. 
All right, maximum volume. So they told us uh, it goes amazingly loud, blah, blah, blah. Uh, by the way, they don't publish the power output on that. Not that it's, it tells you exactly what you need to know, but it's just an indication. Uh, and why are they not telling us? I can't find battery capacity either on that. So Apple beats very shy again on some of their stats. It doesn't matter because you come here, we do the loudness test and I'm going to do that now. Surprisingly close in the bass between all these speakers. But what does differentiate them is how they handle mids and highs. So the Charge 5 goes louder and it's doing that because it's stronger in the mids. In fact, it, again, it's really similar to the Motion 300, except that it has more bass, a lot more bass really, all the way from 300 hertz down than the Motion 300. They are the two loudest speakers and they are the better balanced speakers because the original track is a downward slope. And we can see the flip six and the beats pill have an upward slope. That's how badly balanced they are, especially at maximum volume. And so although the bass is quite similar in all of them, the overall balance is very different. Ultimately, the Charge 5 goes the loudest, has the most bass, and at maximum volume, that's probably all you want. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most beautiful? No, who's the loudest of them all? Well, it depends how you measure loudness. My preferred measure of loudness on these tracks is to say, Luffs, which is basically C-weighted across the entire track. But if you're going by peaks, oh, shall I get into, all right, a lot of people use their uh, cheapo sound, pr sound uh, pressure level meters that they've got off Amazon, blah, 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 which is recording max, not a peak. I'm talking about proper peak, a proper C-weighted peak, not a max. Max is a different type of measurement. Uh, and then the loudness will be different. Just know though, that's an, an instantaneous moment in time. So you can have a very quiet, you have two hours, right, of I'm whispering, I'm whispering, and one second where I'm shouting. So you, is that louder than a track that, that's like this for all the time, it's like a track for two hours or one that's bigger? So just know, even when we talk about loudness, it gets into this debate. What do you mean by loudness? Because I'm saying that because that's, we do get a different result. Just know my uh, measurements are plus or minus one dB. On this particular test, 101 decibel peak for the Motion 300 in its x bass mode. And of course, if you turn bass off, it'll probably go, well, I think it does go, it does, yeah, definitely go louder because it doesn't have to drive the bass. But in the mode, I think most people will listen to it. 101 decibels is louder than the Charge 5 that goes obviously proper louder, but 100.5 decibels. So the instantaneous loudness on this, depending on where that track hits the certain peaks on these speakers and how they handle dynamics and transients, blah, 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 is going to be different. I, didn't point, I, I took 20 minutes for something I, could, I didn't even need to tell you and nobody else measures anyway. Why do I bother? I don't know, good question. But yeah, so just know the difference between how we determine uh, loudness. But no matter how you measure it, a speaker that they are definitely telling us, I was blinking loud and it's a room filling, it doesn't go that loud at all. It goes loud enough for normal listening. But if you was going outside and you're expecting uh, party levels, I mean, it doesn't even do the levels of all three of them, is it? What was the flip six? Uh, overall, uh, 15, minus 15.5 luffs is a lot louder than the minus 18, obviously, nor is the loudest. Minus 18, is it? so it doesn't, it doesn't go loud. Uh, you know, so again, mark, who knew? Marketing bullshit, who knew? Well, we all knew, because Adam uh, Reviews Channel.
but it's not a big deal breaker to me because it actually, if you if you know what you're getting from a V-shaped sound uh, or tuning, this does a job because it's holding on a surprisingly holding on to deep bass. Surprisingly, the actual bass on all these speakers is the same. But, but why do they sound so different then now? Well, because it's how loud the mids and the highs go relative to the bass, which completely changes how the how the speaker sounds overall. Uh, so we've got we do have a bit more bass on the JBL Charge 5, but it goes so much louder in the mids and the highs that some of these others may sound a bit more bass heavy, or maybe not. But that's but you will sometimes find that because one may be very balanced and have slightly more bass, maybe more balanced overall, which will emphasize the bass more than one that has the same bass but pushed in the mids and the highs. So who's the winner at maximum volume? I still say the Charge 5, it's got the bass, but if you actually wanted a warmer sounding speaker, it could be the, the pill or the others indeed, or the 300, depending uh, on what you're listening for and what tracks you're playing indeed. But yeah, so the, the basic the takeaway there was it doesn't go it doesn't go loud. It doesn't go loud when we're talking about its peers. And this is not even its peer because we'll get on that second in the specs. Blimey now, so now already, how long is this video going? I know nobody's gonna watch it. I know maybe I'll just cut them into five minute sections, put 20 sections up on uh, on YouTube, get 20 times the revenue. Happy days. So the, did they miss a trick with the passive rate data? I would say so, given you know, the, the uh, limitations of these speakers and the size, but no passive radiator. They're still getting a bit more deeper bass, impressively, out of this that you may or may not hear, depending on what kind of bass you're listening for, because it's not an upper bass speaker. It's a warmer kind of sound. But yeah, it doesn't have a passive radiator and that could have helped fill out the bass even more. There are no features, a complete lack of features. Uh, so no, there's no EQ in the app. There's no bass function button. They could have had a bass boost, but I guess they've already maxed it out. A lot of these other companies would say, fine, like Soundcore doing, we'll let you have a bit more distortion. Um, and that's a trade-off having a bit more bass. They don't even bother with that. There's no presets. Yeah, uh, it's a bit sparse for the money. They're asking a premium price for the speaker. It's a very competitive area. They say it's IP67. Dustproof is the six, seven is one meter of water for 30 minutes. Thank God for that. You know why? Because it will it will sink. So you won't be able to play it in water uh, and it will sink right at the bottom. If it's 20 meters, it's gone to 20 meters and that IP, and IPX7 part of the rating uh, will do you no good at all. What, what do you think of that? Is it, is it a buy? Well, if you like a V-shaped, it's a possible. If that's the sort of size speaker you want and no messing about with EQs and stuff. It doesn't sound bad if you, if you don't have ears for mids. I've enjoyed, by the way, this did break in. This sounded, for me, a lot better after breaking than before breaking. Just putting that out there. Because uh, how many reviewers break their speakers in? Like the Charge 5 when it came out, um, I did think this sounded better after quite a bit of playing than before. When I first heard that, otherwise, and that, even when I first heard it, oh, it sounds off. Um, obviously, I was hearing the lack of mids, but I enjoyed it more. Also, you've got to spend time with these speakers. Your ears will adjust, your taste will adjust, you use more uh, speak, uh, more genres to test it with and stuff. Your opinions will change. That's why it takes so long, part of the reason why it takes so long to do a review. Yeah, so a bit pricey, is it, is it $149 speaker? Nah, it's not. Uh, would I think about it at about $90, 90 quid? Yeah, uh, then for the V-shaped crowd, I think we might actually offer some value. You're up against speakers like the Motion Plus. Don't know what the, the current Motion Plus uh, sounds like, uh, but it's kind of, but obviously that's a lot bigger. Uh, but you know, those are speakers with lots of features. Mm. But for, you know, for a throwaway, I don't know, it's not really a throwaway, just for a, a pick up and forget speaker. Yeah, not bad if it was $90, but hey, it's $150. Uh, it does make me wonder what a balanced EQ on this would have sound like because they're getting some bass out there that a lot of the others are lacking. You can imagine that with obviously it would go a lot quieter uh, if they have to stick the mids in as well. Just make it, it's obviously, I don't know what the, the power rating is. Given how it's sounding, it sounds like a 20 watt speaker. Give it a bit more power. Oh, it could have been a completely different story for a 40 watt speaker. Um, a bit more volume or a bit more oomph in the mids. Uh, it could have been a game changer. 
Uh, I did have a laugh when I read some of the reviews. CNET, those well-known audio files. They're not after money, are they? No clickbaity stuff on their channel. Anyway, they said all three of the, sp uh, yeah, comp they were comparing it to the Flip 5. Why are you comparing it to the Flip 5? We've got the Flip 6. Anyway, all three of these speakers sound better than the JBL Flip 5. Well, I hope so. Uh, which costs $100. Well, what's that all about? <laughs> they know we've got a Flip 6. And I choose the pill and the Soundlink Flex over JBL's likeable Charge 5 speaker. You know what, I'm now thinking, did I get that right? Maybe they were actually talking about the 2022. I need to check that. So, well, let me check that. And I'll put something up where I may just cut this out in the edit, otherwise I look stupid again. Or do I care? Uh, I think they were actually, must have been talking about the 2022 if they're comparing it to the Flip 5. But why did they pick this out as laughable? Because they said, I choose the Pill and Soundlink Flex over the JBL Charge 5. Well, it would be even more silly, actually, uh, if that's what they're doing. Simply because you're getting comparable sound quality in a more compact speaker. They're very different speakers. I wouldn't choose that over the JBL Charge 5, and I think that's sh stupid. If they're actually talking about the 2024 version, and now looking at it again, they probably are. They're very curious. Tells you, sums up everything about why don't you shouldn't take CNET uh, reviews seriously. And anyway, well, yeah, anyway, uh, that's that. So, yeah, if you want to know about the uh, specs, we can do that. Do you want to do that? Get all this, the superfluous, surplus, so the surplus stuff out of the way. I don't know, this is actually, looks like it's gone into an hour. I don't know. Maybe I just stick this on as a, as a short or something. It's all always, it's always about price. It's always about, not credit price, it's always about um, value for money at price levels. £144, $169. In dollars, it's the most expensive, but in pounds, it's the same price as that. Is that a better, is that, is the JBL Challenge 5 a better speaker than the, the, the Beats Pill? Or taking everything into account, yes. But look, it's bigger. Would I personally pick up the Charge 5 over that? Yes, but I wouldn't mind if I picked up that, which I've been doing. I can still enjoy it, uh, but that's more balanced and it has a little bit more warmth in the base. The Philips 6, £90, $130 for me. So many options. For me, I wouldn't get the Flip 6. I wouldn't get the Flip 6. So many more, uh, better options out there. And then, uh, maybe other versions sound a lot better. Anemic and thin and harsh. Um, yes, you can play around, but you're going to come in. Man, you could have pushed the bass. I'm doing this in default EQ because when I used to do all different types of uh, EQs and stuff, I, I was get the more people were slaughtering me for that than in these videos that slaughter me uh, for just doing it in default. So yes, you can push the bass, but you, even then, it just changes the balance. I know people think they're getting more bass. Well, you're not. There's no headroom. We've done the test, you can check my videos. There's no headroom in the JBL uh, EQ app. They're just, it's faking it. They're changing the balance and by the time you hit uh, the, the maximum volumes, you'll find it's exactly the same. There was no headroom. You're just changing the balance and it's a lot of it, you're just changing the volume step that you would have been at. Uh, the Motion, so but the Motion 300, and that's the thing. I think it's been around 70 quid. I checked today, I always use today's prices as I sit down. 56 quid. $60. Oh, I mean, that, look, uh, look, it's, why it didn't like it that much. It's, it's like a lot of the current, apart from the Boom Plus 2, which I think is an awful sounding speaker, no matter what you do. I try to EQ it. I think it sounds awful. A lot of the others, okay value. And the reason I'm not that enthusiastic is because A, they make silly claims about their speakers, and B, their older speakers often sounded better and give, gave better value. But now we're finding out. The older speakers don't sound like the new equivalents, like the Motion Boom. Um, and so, I, I, you know, I'm having to recommend the ones that I know currently probably sound like the ones I reviewed. I didn't say it was the greatest of all time. I said it has distortion issues, and it does. But for a lot of people, they won't hear that, or they won't push it to the volumes where you hear that, or they just turn off the bass up, and they won't have an issue. And it's stereo, and it's got loads of features, like uh, the parametric equalizer and stuff like that. And it's 56 quid. Uh, $60. So but it's by far the best value. But does that make it the best one? No, because as I said, it does distort um, and it has other peculiarities. But it's definitely, in terms of value, probably the best deal. So $149, $149 quid for the Beats pill. They all do a multi-point functionality. But I charge five, as you said, it's three years old already. But you know, holding its own for now. 
I don't know what the battery capacity is on this. I can't see any teardowns yet. I can't see anywhere where they advertise the battery capacity. And, and we know the big companies tend to do that. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, they don't want your battery capacity, which is which is criminal. It's 27 watt hours for the charge five, 17 watt hours for the flip six, 24 watt hours on the Emotion 300. Of course, it will do uh, SBC. Just know that uh, it's made by Apple, so no surprise it will default to AAC. But the uh, Motion 300 will do AAC, SBC, and LDAC. Very, very nice codec LNAC. Uh, but of course, it's adaptive, so we're assuming um, you're getting strong connectivity. Just like it'll drop right down to basically SBC quality if you're not getting a good connection. Uh, Bluetooth 5.1, charge 5, 5.1, uh, flip 6, 5.3 for the Beats Pill. 5.3 for the charge for the for the beats pill and the motion 300 obviously they're the newest speakers they all do stereo pairing they will all do uh, party mode except for the motion 300 <laughs> that's what i said there's no there's no straight answer ever it all depends on feature, what features and how you listen to it uh, that you're after uh 100 speakers 100 speakers two uh it can do two in stereo but you can't hook up two in party mode None of them have an auxiliary input, but hey, it's got a uh, two-way USB-C, which as far as I know is the only one here. They all have power bank functionality, i.e. power out, except for the Motion 300. Again, lots of good news. It's cheaper, has good codec, but um, it doesn't have power bank functionality, if that's something you want. Now, we're talking the days of uh, power delivery we're talking the days of you know you can get 60 watts out of some of these speakers um in terms of charging so it's old so you can understand uh that's 10 watts you'll get out of that that's five volts two amps 10 watts you'll get out of that but they're all singing all dancing from apple it's seven and a half watts i mean mate not a huge difference but it's i mean that's so minimal that's 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 almost criminal but it will charge at five volts three amps but it will only charge a uh, power bank out, you know, as its output, seven and a half watts, which is, again, criminal really for, for the price and for the company that's making this. Only the Motion 300 and the Beats Pill can uh, handle phone calls. Again, maybe that's something you need. So, again, no straight answer ever. The power of them, 40 watts uh, charge five, they say 30 watts flip six, 30 watts for the Motion 300. No idea. I'm guessing 20 watts, but I've got no idea. They don't want to tell you. The lightest on the table is the Flip 6, 550 grams, followed by the 680 grams of the Beats Pill, followed by 775 grams of the Motion 300. Of course, it's the biggest one. It's 980 grams, but they're all pretty light. They're still very travel friendly, one hand friendly. The only one here that... So they are all IP7. They all do one meter water for 30 minutes. And they are all dust proof, except for... The Motion 300, again, it's cheap. Why is it cheap? Well, some, some of the functionality is not there that you've got on the others. That is not uh, dust proof. And by the way, if you don't float and it drops into two meters of water, what's the point? So the only one here that will float is JBL Charge 5. But sadly, not with the drivers up, so you won't be able to listen to it like that. Don't know the size of the drivers, they don't tell you. Just know, we talk, well, we already talked about if you're skipping right in the end, we talked about the driver setups for these speakers at the beginning. The only one that tells us they've got neodymium magnets is the Beats Pill. In terms of latency, and the only usable one here for me is the Flip 6. Uh, 133 milliseconds. For me, 80 milliseconds is cut off point. This is a test of lip sync. For me on YouTube, 133 milliseconds is pretty bad. Charge 5, 83 milliseconds is usable for Flip 6. The multi codecs in the Motion 300 are all bad. 216 milliseconds for LDAC, 200 seconds for AAC, 116 milliseconds uh, SBC, and it on, uh, just tested it on AAC, 100 milliseconds. It's usable, but you're going to notice lip sync. Again, three band equalizer, three band equalizer, nine band equalizer, plus a parametric equalizer. Nothing, no presets, no equalization. Nothing nil zero. So a lot of for a lot of people, I guess, a no-brainer speaker like that, where there's no messing about with the app and changing things, or oh, is this bit better? Because a lot of us will spend days, weeks, and years messing about with the EQ. That's a little bit better. No, a little bit. You, that's what I said. It's a pick up and forget kind of speaker. 
it will do a job on holiday, especially traveling, V-shaped outdoors, probably works okay. Has a nice base, so it makes up for, you know, not having the mids to an extent. And that's the end of the video. I mean, so the, the takeaway is, is never a straight answer. The takeaway is it's overpriced, but not KD price. So it's not overpriced, so it is overpriced, but it's not a complete loser. You just gotta know what it does. So this for me is a hundred quid kind of speaker and I would it would be a kind of thumbs up. Just know it's V-shaped, but it's not. It's, so it's a hard one to sum up. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. Um, some, I mean, I, I don't dislike it. It's not awful. It can do a job, but for the money, I don't know. It's hard to say. I've seen value, that's the, but then I can play that louder without distortion than that. Because I, if I turn the next bass off, that's got way more bass. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope I get something out of this video. I hope, I hope, I hope. But not Bob Hope, I don't know. Uh, do, uh, uh, we've been through that before. A lot of people out there are as old as me, or nearly as old as me, and you, even, I, by the way, for me, Bobo was before my time, but I was aware of him. So, yeah, that's why I said Bobo. The old joke was, you got two hopes. No hope and Bobo. That's the end of the video. I thank you for watching. I hope to see you again in another video, because otherwise I'm just talking to myself, and I thank you for watching this time. Thank you very much. What the f*** was that? Ah! comes from China. China. My speaker's got deep bass, balanced mids, and a bright high. Yes, mine sounds exactly the same.